Today we are continuing with verse 3 of Sri Sri Radharasa Sudhanidhi. Yesterday we were describing how it was difficult for gods like Brahma and Shiva to attain the foot dust of Radhika. And we'll continue with another example. The dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet is called Srimat or filled with opulences here. Even for the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, this foot dust is very difficult to attain. In Srimad Bhagava, the wives of the Kaliya snake say that the goddess of fortune gave up the side of her divine husband, Narayan, by her own will and took shelter of Vrindavan to perform harsh austerities there, hoping for the foot dust of Sri Krishna. But that until now, she had not been able to get it. Why not? In Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, Chapter 8, it is explained if you worship the Prince of Raj in a reverential mood without following in the footsteps of the gopis, you will not attain him. <clears throat> Lakshmi Devi is the best example of that. Although although she did worship Krishna as the prince of Raj, she did not attain him. The Lord's greatest devotee, Uddhava Mahashaya, was astonished when he saw the greatness of the gopis' love for Krishna, and he praised them, praying for a birth in Vraj, even as a blade of grass, so that he could get the gopis' foot dust on his head. This is written with golden syllables in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavat. From this, it is clear how hard it is to attain the foot dust of Sri Radha. So here it's uh, important to see the difference Austerities like Lakshmi Devi is doing is not meaning to take shelter <clears throat> to enter Vrindavan there is not meaning of austerities this is an act of mercy. Wow. We cannot enter Vrindavan by our own power. 
or our own uh, doing. <coughs> Lakshmi Devi is a good example so that we need the mercy of someone. And in our case, we take shelter on Swamini personally. We give up everything, our position, everything, there is nothing left. Even our body, we have to give up this material body and enter in the spiritual body. And this mercy, Radhika's mercy is flowing from the lotus feet of Gurudev. So this is a, a beautiful example. She likes to take shelter, no, she likes to, to get the lotus feet of Krishna. What is even more easy to get than Sri Radhika's lotus feet? <laughs> but not by our own doing. Austerities will not bring to Vrindavan. <laughs> Jai Sri Radhe Jai Gurudev. Yeah. There's another way <coughs> of understanding this question of re relation that Gaurasundra brings up. And that's through the idea of opulence, which is named. The dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet is called Sri Math, or filled with opulence. So opulence is a kind of beauty. It's one aspect of Radha's beauty. But it's a kind of beauty that comes from something we cannot understand, something that's so great, something that's so powerful, that it rather creates fear than intimacy. So this opulence if we understand Radha only as op opulence, only as this pure beauty, <coughs> we are kept at a distance from her. In all the three examples, Brahma from yesterday, Lakshmi Devi and Udav from today, there's the wrong understanding of what Radha's beauty is. And that's why the, it's difficult to enter to get the lotus dust. So to get the lotus dust, we must not fix on the external fearful perfect beauty, we must focus on how that beauty attracts Krishna. How that beauty is the energy of giving love. And how that beauty is the energy of relation. There's a very famous scene in Bhagavad Gita 
if you're following the class, then you remember. In chapter 12, Krishna says to Arjuna, I see you are a pure devotee. So I'm going to show you my total being. I'm going to show you my opulence. And this opulence is so great that it frightens Arjuna. The opulence is so great that it frightens Arjuna, it pushes him away. And Arjuna says, please don't show me. Because I want to be a friend. I don't want you to be my king. Just like we don't want Radhika to be our queen. We want her to be our friend. And have a living relation with her. Wow, would have been a very nice example. Thank you so much. I see Radhika's opulence not in that kind of few, that uh, her opulence is meaning of some, uh, what we understand about opulence. Her opulence is that of feelings. The opulence of her feelings, because of them, she is called Mahabhava. And this is her opulence. What I can see in her. And uh, she is not our, she actually, we can say she's our queen also because she's the queen of Vrindavan. But this means. Not this opulence of Narayan. This is the opulence of sweetness and intense feelings. In this way, I understand her opulence. Sweetness, intense feelings, taking care. Mitgefühl, was heißt das? Compassion. Compassion. These are all her opulences. And when Krishna show Arjuna his universal form, then he show him the form of Vishnu. And uh, Krishna is always the sweet Krishna, the Krishna from Vrindavan, Radhika's Krishna. This opulence of Vrindavan is completely different from the opulence of Vaikuntha. Is that right? Is there a this explanation? Are you agree with this? I this is what I feel. Yeah. So if we look at Swamini then we cannot see this opulence of Vaikuntha. Then we cannot see Swamini. And uh, there is Lakshmi, actually. This kind of, of opulence, with reverence, what you say, Udavji, this is actually, this is uh, Lakshmi Narayan. 
We can see in Vrindavan there are cow herders. Even Krishna is a cowherd boy. And we are maid servants. We are the what is meaning of, of gopis with that we start? What is in English milk maiden? Is it right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> milk maiden. So this is a there is no not this kind of opulence we see in Vaikuntha. Their opulence is the sweetness of their feelings and love. Like Radha Kund, when we see Radha Kund, the opulence of Radha Kund is always that it's overflowing. There is a sport in Radha Kund. And this is overflowing, this is the opulence. And even Shyama Kund need this opulence of the feelings of Radha Kund, otherwise it will dry after some time. It goes always from Shirata to Mohan. Continue flowing. Mahabhava. This is Radhika's opulence. How I understand this. And we serve this kind of opulence when we enter in her seva and in her feelings. Jai Shirati. Vedanta Maharaj says, yeah. well, the, when we speak of the opulence, no, yeah, the opulence, the compassion that you mentioned is uh, is is predominant, and we as devotees. We are recipients of that through the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is the most munificent incarnation, assuming the golden form. See, and he is distributing this frame, this love to everyone. When he's crying in the mood of separation, the tears are falling on all the living entities, showering them with the mercy. So this this opulence, we, we see it through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this as assuming the form of Radharani, when we say this nice verse. Namo Mahabhadanyaya Krishna Prem Purayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namne Gora Gora Krishna Namaha. So the golden complexion of Radharani. So it's difficult for us to attain this. I mean, we're seeing how difficult it is for these powerful, powerful demigods to reach it. So how is it that we insignificant jivas can reach it? Only, 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 only through the mercy of Mahaprabhu and of course our beloved Gurudev we're able to attain this. And it's the greatest miracle, the greatest gift, not just of the universe but of all the material and spiritual worlds combined that we have this opportunity for this, something so, 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 so rare to attain, and we are experiencing it 
It's really a miracle, something that is very difficult for us to fathom with our minuscule minds, just only through our feelings, only through our our expression through service that we're able to attain this. So, uh, yeah, it's really incredible. Yeah, very nice. Suniti so, make also one quote to uh, Lakshmi Devi that uh, the, because of she don't took shelter of the lotus feet of the gopis. She could not enter Vrindavan. So, right, Suniti? Yes, she didn't want to make the cow patties. And she didn't want to make the cow patties loud. And become a milkmaid. And become a milkmaid. <laughs> yes. So cow patties is for a queen a little strange. <laughs> And we know from from Krishna also that because the gopis cannot count so good, I think they only can count until ten or, or like this. And so once they use Krishna, when they are counting, and they put a little uh, dot dot of, of cow dung on his uh, forehead so that they can count nicely. So, and Krishna was sta standing there and got one, one dot after the other from the gopis so that they count nicely. One dot of cow dung. So, even we are, for us to touch the cow, the leftovers of the cows, it's not so easy. But in India, the cow, the maidens, it's very easy. <laughs> so we can understand uh, how hard it is for Lakshmi Devi to give up. This uh, this kind of opulence, the behavior of a queen. This is a nice example from Suniti, I feel. Yeah, I love the line that she highlighted there, to follow in the footsteps of the gopis. Mm. What does it mean to follow in the footsteps of the gopis? Also, Udhava need this. This yeah. year, this moment. When we... Yeah. Go, go, go ahead. When we follow someone, we want to become exactly like them, following in the footsteps. We want to dress like them, we want to act like them, we want to like what they like, we want to smile when they smile, and feel what they feel. And in all of these examples, Brahma, Shiva, and Lakshmi both <laughs> did not come into this, this feeling, this following of the gopis. In fact, their prayers were even for non-moving entities so that they could take the dust of Rajabhasis and gopis. And this is the same for us. This is our first step. 
to move into our spiritual body as a gopi. Yet we, the first step is to take shelter mm. on the lotus feet of a manjari. Yeah, yeah. Of a spiritual master. And then, by his mercy, everything is coming. But first, we have to take shelter. And if we yeah. don't take shelter, we will not get it. The Lord's greatest devotee, Uddhava Maharaja, Mahashaya, was astonished when he saw the greatness of the gopis' love for Krishna, and he praised them, praying for a birth in Draj even as a blade of grass, so that he could get the gopis' foot dust on his head. This is written with golden syllabus in the pages of Srimad Bhagavata. From this it is clear how hard it is to attain the foot dust of Sri Radha. So these, gopis, these gopis are not manjaris. Right, this so is the like difference. It's more like, uh, I think Mahatma Ji is right, that in, that in order to enter into spiritual consciousness, then <clears throat> we must lie at the, we must take on Gopi Bhav, and then hope that we become blades of grass, so that one day Mahaprabhu can walk upon us, <laughs> or Manjaris, <laughs> In the world, after Mahaprabhu could walk upon us, and we can have the lotus dust on our sweet wow. heads. Wow! This is our unique chance, without you. Yeah. That we are so close to this. Yeah. It's only like yesterday when Mahaprabhu was there, <laughs> and other generations not got the, this unique chance. There is a really, it's, it's wow. When Mahaprabhu came, he brought the Manjaris with him. And by their mercy, we can take shelter on the Manjaris, not only on the Gopis. Because there is only Manjaris are the real servant of Radhika. So we need the mercy of the Manjaris. Before Gopis was there, also Old Testament. That was possible, but Manjari was not possible. But by Mahaprabhu's mercy, now it is possible to get the dust of the lotus feet of the Manjaris. So we can really enter in that foot dust and uh, we can get the lotus feet of Radhika. Very beautiful. What is the difference between Gopi Bhav and Manjari Gopi Bhav? is asking what the difference is between Gopi Bhav and Manjari Bhav. Gopis. No, I maybe one another one like to share. <laughs> when we we uh, read the Tat Kanto, Shrimad Bhagavatam, uh, the Gopi Gita, and we have so many examples of the Gopis' complete and total surrender to Lord Krishna, to Mohan. So, this is, as we were just saying before, maybe a, an entrance point, you know, before reaching, getting the mercy of my problem for the, for the Manjari Bhav, because this, this is going back, you know, 5,000 years before Mahaprabhu's advent. Uh, this was the prevalent, the highest, you know, the highest Bob available, the Gopi Bob. It's a, a nice um, 
I don't. I haven't memorized all this, these things, but if we go back and read the, we see where they're addressing the flute and, and they're envious of the flute. Because the flute is dancing on Krishna's lips, and the gopis say, you know, this this piece of bamboo <laughs> has so much, so much mercy, so much fortune that it's able to dance on Krishna's lips. You know, if we only we could have that, how this flute, you know, attains this this piece of bamboo, and also so many things. Um, so many of their activities, their pastimes, to show their complete and utter sacrifice of their whole being to, to Mohan to satisfy him. So this is this is Gopi Bab, as I understand it, just on a very basic level, without realizing it, just from reading about it and imagining it and meditating on it. Yes, no. Whereas Manjari Bab is a whole deeper level. The one pointedness. The Gopi Bab, we could say, is Sanchari, it's shifting, it's not fixed. As we know also, Gopis like Lalita and the other Sakis, they're also very, very attracted to Sri Radharani. So their focus is shifting. It's not fixed. But the Manjari Bhav, it's complete and total service to Lotus Feet of Radharani, exclusive service to Radharani's Lotus Feet. So we, we're all familiar with these concepts. And this is, uh, if someone would like to expand on this, share with us, that would be great. Gopi Bhav is God consciousness. Manjari Bhav is Prem consciousness. This means Prem. Gopi Bhav means establishing a relationship of love to, to Krishna. Like, it's exactly like you say, Sadantiji, that the Gopis have a unstoppable love for Krishna. And in Manjari Bhav, there's an understanding of an unstoppable love for the one who loves Krishna. So there's an there's a devotion, one pointed devotion to divine loving, to the divine loving feelings of Radharani. So for us, this means instead of Gopi Bhav, where we simply are conscious that we have a soul that is lovable and loving, we understand in Mandari Bhav that we have a relationship to divine love, to 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 Radha's love for Krishna. So from soul consciousness to understanding that the soul is love. This is the difference. This is one difference. So men sir. Higher is Manjari Bhav than Gopi Bhav. Manjari Bhav to Gopi Bhav. Right? Absolutely. So, here you see the example. Read again. From Benjamin. From Benjamin. Today, what to read again? Read. Okay. The dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet. You see, this is the point. To reach to the Manjari Bhav is very difficult. Dust of Radhika lotus feet. Yeah. Is called Srimat. 
or filled with opulences here. I see Chetan Chetamrit Ara Sloka Unnat Ujjal Rasa Bhakti Shriyam Unnat Ujjal Rasa Ujjal Rasa was there Gopi Bhav Unnat Ujjal by the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Unnat Ujjal means just developed by the Chaitanya. Unnat means we get progress. Elevated. Elevated. Ujjal. What is that? Unnat Ujjal Rasa Bhakti Shriyam. In the Bhakti, Highest Shriyam means the highest. There is not Sanam Bonam. You see Chaitan Chaitamrit, first chapter, third sloga, right? Fourth sloga. Fourth sloga. So, Adirila, no. Adirila, first. First canto, no, no, not me. Fourth sloga. This is the desire of Chaitanya. If we are follower of Chaitanya, that is Bhakti Shriyam. Unnatuja. So here come, you see, even they not reach Gopi They are Krishna Bhakta. All are, they become Krishna devotee, very close Krishna devotee, but not Gopi They don't understand even Gopi The dust of Sri Radha's lotus feet is called Srimat or filled with opulences here. Even for the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi Devi, this foot dust is very difficult to attain. In Srimad Bhagavat, the wives of the Kaliya snake say that the goddess of fortune gave up the side of her divine husband, Narayan, by her own will and took shelter of Vrindavan to perform harsh austerities there, hoping for the foot dust of Sri Krishna. But that until now, she has not been able to get it. You see, direct shelter of, the, of Krishna, not take shelter of the gopis even. No gopi bhav even. Gopi no gopi bhav, yeah. She is a karya is putting poison for Prajavati. How they will get the gopi bhav? So Krishna has to jump to fight with the karya. They come for something, austerity, but they cannot do. So Krishna has to jump to fight. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is explained, if you worship the Prince of Raj in a reverential mood, without following in the footsteps of the gopis, you will not... Not the gopis, 
Now, na understand. Gopi. You will not attain him. He is it. Many devotees doing that Krishna devotion like a career. Even they cannot attend 30, 40 years practice, even that Krishna devotion. It's amazing, Gurudev. That's really amazing to get this now in this text. It's uh, mind blowing. You see that? Because outside they are devotee, inside something else is happening. Like a Kadia. Outside he comes to hostility. But inside he has a poison. Amazing. I was I was in uh, West Bengal and we went to visit one one really uh, lifelong Iskon devotee, a very nice man, actually kind of like distant family member, like uncle. We went to his house, very opulent. And Karthik Kartik month is approaching, and I say, oh, I say, Baba, I say, we're going to Vrindavan. Why don't you come with us to Vrindavan? He says, no, no, I'm going to Dwarka. I said, Dwarka? He says, yes. He says, we go to Dwarka. I was shocked. You know, previous, trying on this term. I was shocked, you know. Why why he's going to Dvarka? You know, he's a lifelong born into go into go to Vaishna family actually, but he took ISKCON initiation and he wants to go to Dvarka. I didn't ask further, I just kind of ended the discussion there, but it was surprising that many as Guru Dave was saying, many practicing decades, decades, and have this reverential attitude, approach towards Krishna. And this is, I assume it's based on some material desire, right? My God, this is so clear now to understand why things happen. Because even in the Christianity, it's the same Thing happened. They don't took shelter on the lotus feet of Jesus. They like to direct going to God, and so they cannot get what Jesus gave. This is the love. And same happened now. How beautiful explained here in this in these verses. If we not take shelter on the foot dust, so Lakshmi Devi gave this example to us. We need to take shelter. If we like to attain Krishna, we have to take shelter on the gopis, go to street. If we like to attain Radhika, we have to take shelter on the lotus feet of the manjari. Good morning. We will not get it when we go directly, try to go directly to Radhika. We need the lotus feet of a manjari. So in this case, I feel that we are on the right way. And uh, that makes good hope. Because there is a, a living example. निकल गया क्या? अच्छा ठीक।
Yeah. Uh, sorry. No, uh, uh, this is uh, your, how you explain this, the blockage and when we go direct, try to go directly, it's not possible, not to Krishna, not to Radhika. We need to take shelter of the gopis in Krishna's case and the manjaris in Radhika's case. And the gopi all material desires have to be finished. That is gopi. Yeah. You see, I have a Radha Rasulani, the first page. If the lust is there, he cannot be a gopi. Little material lust is there, sense enjoyment is there, more material thing achievement. Even I cannot go to Gopi Mahavya. Right. So Gopi Bhav, listen this. It's a very beautiful teaching. If you worship the Prince of Raj in a reverential mood without following in the footsteps of the gopis, you will not attain him. If reverential mood means I don't follow gopiva. Even the Krishna is not attainable. <laughs> this is the problem. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Lakshmi Devi is the best example of that. Although she did worship Krishna as the Prince of Raj, she did not attain him. The Lord's greatest devotee, Buddha of Mahashaya, was astonished when he saw the greatness of the gopi's love for Krishna, and he praised them, praying for a birth in Vraj, even as a blade of grass, so that he could get the gopi's foot dust on his head. This is written with golden syllables in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavad. From this, it is clear how hard it is to attain the foot dust of Sri Radha. What? Why it difficult? Because when my mind is not fixed out of the lust for Krishna, how I can fix my mind? Only one pointed in Sri Radha. That the point. Because from Sri Radhika, I will not receive anything. Krishna, He can give me something, something material, thing, material benefit. But Radhika, not possible. If she accepts, that is different issue. Then you sit 
そうするとなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかなんかそれは自分によって、自分によってできるよ、ね。そう、で、彼女は、自分の気持ちがはっきりさらまらないと、自分の気持ちがはっきりさらまらないと、自分の気持ちがはっきりさらまらないと、自分の気持ちがはっきりさなのなのそうですね。
Gopis, whatever they doing, even in 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 the house, they are cooking something, they making bed, they are preparing this or that, or they taking care of some babies or whatever. When they listen the flute, then immediately they they left this situation. Same moment they run run out of the house. Yeah. yeah. The manger is not run out of the house. They listen the flute, but they running nowhere. Yeah. They oh, in that moment they look at her swamini. Oh, My yeah. God! Now we have to take care of her. <laughs> because her mood is, you know, <laughs> what is meaning of a wild elephant? Who can stop a wild elephant? <laughs> and that this is her mood in that moment. She also liked to let everything falling down. And how she is, she will run, but Manjaris will take care of her. Rameshwaradi can also be interpreted as meaning the Lord of Brahma, Krishna. Even for Krishna, the amazing foot dust of Sri Radhika is rarely attained. It is. What is this phenomenon? Your Krishna also very difficult to attend. Krishna is the same as the Lord of Manjari, even though Krishna cannot get it. <laughs> Everything just goes to one point. Yes. It is said that Krishna personally assumed the form of the poet Jayadev to write the famous line Give me your generous lotus feet, lotus feet on my head. <laughs> 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 The purport of the 201st verse of Radharasa Sudhaniti is one day Srimati is Manini angry out of jealousy. So, with the help of her girlfriends, Krishna keeps her feet on his head. Thus, her peak is soothed. Srimati's lotus feet are moist with sweat. So the red lack on her foot soles sticks on Sham's head while his peacock feather falls off. 
This does not make Krishna inferior. The signs of Radha's mercy rather increase his glories. This makes him Rasi Kendra Mauli, wow. the king of relishers. My God. And this is the quintessence of Godhead. What's wow. mine? Mm. Yes. Subject. Underline it. Yes. Already underlined. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> this is opulence. This is opulence. Now we come to the point. This is Radhika's opulence on Krishna's head. Now he becomes summum bonum. Before he was God controller, but with the foot dust of Radhika on his head, he become Sumam Bono. And see, now you see, whole time we listen that God is controller and we are the subject. And Chaitanya appear, the Prabhupada is writing, the God becomes subject and the object becomes Radhika. My God. Very clear words. Radhika is the object and the God becomes subject. God becomes subject. And after that we don't believe and we are followers of Chaitanya. And this is words of Prabhupada. Yeah. And I follow Prabhupada. And which type of Prabhupada you follow? The words of Prabhupada is in the books. Beautiful. And this, this does not make Krishna inferior when he becomes subject. This makes him Rasik, Rasik Kendra Mauli. This is Mahan Panam. More beauty coming. Hmm? Even the Krishna Leela, he cannot show this. No. The appearance of the Radhika. So Chaitanya appear in the whole Kali Yuga to open this religion. But this is different issue that somebody believe in scripture, somebody believe in Chaitanya teaching. Many I see the Gauriya Vaishnav believe in teachings of Srimad Bhagavad and other books. They don't believe teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> they don't believe. Right or not? If they believe, they all become Manjari. They will believe that they have to defend more will come. They will reach the place where they are they start realizing themselves. But they have no time for realization. They have time for preaching and becoming guru. Controller. Controller line is more better. That's so number one line. 
そうするとそれは知らない。外れてしまうとする。結局の心理学が外れてしまう。May also try to do some austerities. Sanyas like this. This is how we show. I was also Sanyas. Oh, sorry, Gurudev. I know this thing. More comfortable way to live. <laughs> Somebody takes sannyas, I renounce sannyas. It's not famous. <laughs> 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 Daddy? No, Daddy? Who is that? I will check. No, Daddy is not. Yeah, okay, no problem. <laughs> no, he's not there. Somebody takes a nap and I took a nap, practice 22 years. And I say, okay, I will be normal. <laughs> <laughs> this is over abnormality. I have to be normal. I have to be what I am. I have to be in my real situation. Wow. Slowly come to our constitutional position. That is the point. If I am abnormal outside, I will not reach to the constitution in my reality. What I am, what I come for, and what I am doing, I will not come for that. I will start watching others, not to myself. And I decide to watch full to myself. There was also Chaitanya also was uh, sannyas, no? Took sannyas. Sannyas took him. Yeah. We took our It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was for preaching is important. If you travel, you need a different dress clothes. But when you are in the realize that he also was in the Gambira. He not wearing what he dress, he don't know. Yeah. So he gave example for both, right, Gurudev? He was also Kriyasta. Yeah, he was Kriyasta. He was Sanyasi and he was in ecstasy, mad. Yeah. He show everything in his own life. He was teacher also. Teacher. He controller also. Yeah. Mm. He was in Radha Moon. He was in Mandiri Bhav. He test everything. And he teach well. And then we have to check which vow he has now. That is your reason. Yeah. That is when you practice, you can realize now Mahaprabhu has this vow. We hope Katam eight. My God. Very fast time. We start 15 minutes late because of the fog. Oh. A whole night I sleep on chair. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no, goodness. 
can't sleep on bed. Why? Neck has a big pain. So I sleep on chair. Oh. After 12. Oh my God. I can bad, but I can. The chanting and stretching for 12. And it's also full moon, good. If, uh, then also sleep is not coming, no? そうですね。Therefore, simply to increase his own greatness, Krishna always desires the dust. Of Sri Radha's lotus feet. <laughs> And this is not. Krishna desires the dust of Radhika's lotus What about us? Are bhaiya? Our Krishna desires the dust of Radhika. If I don't do this, then unfortunate. Krishna desires this. Leave others. But Krishna himself desires this. Because he, know, he knows that quintessence cannot possible. Control cannot make quintessence. Controller can control and he will teach you to control. Yeah. <laughs> and live in the false ego because you cannot be a god, but you will think that you become god. You are the creator of your universe. And then you will burn out the Dharma, Artha, Kama. Kama will desire will fulfill. Then you need liberation. Then you want to run away from that. These are all gunas, the dharma, artha, the religious activities, artha, money, kama, materialism, and then all want to run away from that. This is moksha. But oh, prostration. Prostration is the moksha. Too much suffer, and I want to run away from that. Mm. Mm. They are also very much religious people. Because religion is the nature of them. 
、経験的な活動をするというのが目標になっちゃうんです。Some で、自分が最高のデボーティーだと思っていたりする。Come to his, uh, uh, what? What is the English? That important place is And I come to visit Vrindavan, Vrindavan, Ardo Arishikesh, and Vrindavan. Tourist. Tourist. Spiritual tourist. Spiritual tourist. 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 Visit and a nice get point. When in Krishna's case, we can see he needs to take shelter. When he came as Mahaprabhu, first he has to take shelter on Swamini's lotus feet, because otherwise he cannot enter her feelings, and even he cannot enter in the feelings of a devotee, in, in, in that case of a manjari. So for both, he needs to take shelter on Swamini. She gives The mercy of her service, and she gives the mercy to feel her feelings towards him. So, Prabhupada is telling if you want to be a good devotee, go to Vrindavan, serve to Brajavasis. And learn from that. Why? Because this only can learn by Brajavasis. This is the beauty. <laughs> And the bridge Basi is one who loves Mohan and has a relationship towards him. And what is the love the bridge Basi has? This is Radhika. And this is not a fairy tale. There is strong scriptural evidence for this statement. Krishna himself tells Uddhava in Srimad Bhagavat, I Always follow my devotees to sanctify myself with their foot dust. Srimad Jiva Goswami comments on this verse Since I am not able to repay. My devotees for their devotional service. I perform atonement by following them to take the dust of their feet for my purification. Wow. Who is that telling? 
ಶಿವಾ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶ್ರೀನಗೆ Krishna himself tells Uddhava in Srimad Bhagavat I always follow my devotees to sanctify myself with their foot dust explain this <laughs> ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸಿದ್ಧ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ So I don't really want to speculate too much here. Um we have the we don't what have, is written there. What's written here is um Uddhava in this Uddhav Gita he's speaking with Krishna he says I always follow my devotees I always follow my devotees to sanctify myself with their foot dust. You see I say He follow his devotee. Buddha is the best friend of Krishna. Best friend. They eat in the one place. They they wear same clothes. And they look from this sense. Buddha look like Krishna. And they sleep in the one bed. Buddha and Krishna is sleeping in the one bed. they are horse riding Buddha with the best horse rider and both horse ride Buddha and Krishna and they are the one of the best and he is the son of Brahaspati Brahaspati means who has the teaching of the knowledge himself Brahaspati born to the Krishna's friend and one day they are so friendly but he always think to Krishna he is a God Brahma Paramatma God has no form he is not identified with the form So Krishna has also but he is normal person so they are very close friend they don't identify the word that he is a supreme person he don't believe that. and they are very good friend one day Krishna is sitting in the park and he has a, some tears and very sad then uthav goes there he asks what happened to you we are so happy he said no no nothing happened just i am sitting something remember that is so what what you worried about i am your friend why you worried anything to see yes little worry for my mother and my friends who is in the Vrindavan and my gopis who are only waiting for me. I said that I will come back in two days and I never go there. So I am worried about that then. Then will not die because I promised that I will come back and they are waiting for me. What to do? He said, can I go and teach them that you are Paramatma, you are the Supreme God. Krishna, God is not everywhere and nowhere. Impersonal teaching. He said, yes, yes, Uddha. you are the best teacher 
you go and you can help them. They are not very educated. They are not literate village people. They don't understand that Paramatma is divine. He has no form. He's, he's not, they don't understand reality. You know all the sastra. You can convince them. This was the mercy of Krishna for Uddhav, that he wants to, his friendship should, he should realize everything, to see the other side of the knowledge. One is the intellectual, one is a devotional. So he said to them, it's a very nice Uddhav Charitra. You have all has to read that. And this book is written by Akhanda Nandji. It's so beautifully writing, so big book. You will cry and read Uddhav Charitra. How they are so close friends and so nicely living and so nicely realize with them. When he comes to the Vrindavan, one thing, when he starts entering in the Vrindavan, he is driving the horse, chariot. When the dust starts coming to Vrindavan, he starts looking at it. These trees are going down to the earth. Normally trees are going up, but project trees are going down. And this way, it's all false ego. By the dust is coming on ahead because there is a beach road or dusty road, and he starts realizing only by the dust of Britta. So beautifully written that book, I can say you. I read maybe ten times. Though Dhav Charitra. And how he meeting with the mother Jasuda, how he meets with the, his friend, Krishna's friend, how he meets with the gopis, and how he sees Radhika, that time what happened to her. What is the beauty of realization of Uddhava? It is so beautifully described that rather than telling you some part of that. Is this available in English? Yes, maybe. Akhandanan Marsh. But if you read to feel the pain of the gopis, they, that is a describe. You will cry with the lights, yeah? Instead of reading mm -hmm. pain of gopis, we could read the joy of Krishna. It's almost like in this line from Bhagavatam, it's almost like the presence of Titania, because with all the love the gopis have for Krishna, he is the great enjoyer, the great enjoyer of the love that he receives. But what he realizes here is that the higher way of enjoying love is by giving love back, by de giving devotion to those who love him. That's a beautiful thing. That is the highest. Thing. And then he want to go into Krishna and stay in Vrindavan to give love. <laughs> and he feels that he cannot do that. He missed the chance with Krishna to love like this. They have no closeness like me. 
but I cannot do, but say to still they don't forget. They are still waiting. Even the mother just said, I am still waiting, crying, but she don't want to die, because when she will die, and Krishna will come, each, my son will become sad, so she don't want to die. She don't like to eat, but when they think about Krishna, they eat to survive. Wow. I don't like this book. <laughs> this is the Uddhav Charitra. How did he, Uddhav, want to be Manjari? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could have not want to be Gopi. He want to be Manjari. He want to be dust of Bindava. He want to be trees of Bindava to serve all the time to this. All the all the people who love in Bindava. This is Wow. <laughs> Book of Agony. Full of love. I wish to. Full of ecstasy. Full of madness of Buddha. Full of realization of Uddhava. Only by darshan of Mother Jasoda and Baba. He said to Mother, Are Krishna is a Paramatma, Brahma. He is, not, he, is, he is always with you and he is everywhere. <laughs>
Then when he said to mother, he is a god, he has no light, Mana, he is not a he is, he is always the same. He has no age and this and that. Then mother bring to the to the to room. He showed the room. When my Krishna was two years old, he wear this cloth. When he became five, six years old, this is the cloth. He, he has no body. How he is wearing clothes? What you are teaching to me? Don't lie to me. You don't know. This is Krishna who is wearing this clothes. This Krishna who is taking the breast from breastfeeding from my breast. I know better than you. You have no relation. I have a relation I'm a mother. He is my baby. How you know better than me? He was a Very long past time. Something I remember, so touching. I read ten times this Uddhav Charit when I was young, 25, 27 years old. 